In this lesson, we're going to take a look at compound probability. Compound probability is the chance of multiple events happening. So what we want to do is come up with a number, a percentage, what is the chance that not just one thing will happen, but a string of events will happen. So in the last lesson, we looked at flipping a coin. I'm going to use this coin, which is red on one side, yellow on the other. A number cube, or a die, six-sided die. And I'm also going to use this, which is just a plain bin, and I have three different soccer balls in here, two green and one white. If I would do these separately, we would know the chance of a red is one half. The chance of a two is one out of six. The chance of a white is one out of three. But what happens if I start stringing events together? So what you might get is a problem that looks thing, like this. Probability, instead of just one event, it'll have a couple of events. So let's make the game harder. Instead of flipping and getting a head, or a red, or a yellow, what we'll do is this. Probability of a yellow and a two. So in order to win this game, I don't just have to flip a yellow, I don't just have to get a two, I have to get both to happen. What we can do is look at them individually and then we'll work to put them together. Okay? What we're going to do is underneath each one, we're going to put its own individual probability. So probability of flipping a yellow. Well, we know there's one yellow out of two different ways it can land, so this is one half probability of rolling a two. Well, again, I have one side that has two on it and six total sides. So I would have one out of six. Now, all I need to do in dealing with compound probabilities is multiply them together. Okay? So what I'm going to do is take my simple probabilities and I'm going to multiply them together. And what this will do is give me my total probability of all of it. Multiply together. So let's check how this works. One half times one six. I cannot reduce diagonally at all. I would try that first, and I would get one up top, and I would get 12 on the bottom. Now, in theory, if I would do this, if I would run this contest with 12 students, one of them should win because that's what it's saying. One out of every 12 should win. And I can take this down to a percent. Let me get my calculator real quick. One divided by 12 is 0 .083. If I move it two times, take my decimal, move it two times to the right, I would get 8.3 repeating percent. So we'll round that to roughly 8%, which again is 1 out of every 12. So let's try it here 12 times, see if I can't get it to win. Okay, I'm going to roll the die. No. 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 I finally got one. I got a two. Now that's out of six times, I think. So I'm halfway through 12 different people who are trying to win this competition. Remember, they have to have both happen. So they got a two. I'm halfway there. Now, this must be yellow in order to win. Okay, out of 12 people, I think I'm at person number six. Uh, so will this person win? I don't know. Let's see. I got a yellow, so this is my winner. Now, this should be the one out of the 12 people that I have tested. Is this person going to be the only person that wins? Maybe, maybe not. But if things work out right, it should only be one person. So that was six. And that was it. That was the only two I got. Now, the reason I only rolled the die is because, remember, they had to win both of them. So it worked out that one out of 12 times it will work. Okay, let's go on. Let's say this game's getting too easy, one out of every 12, one out of every 12. Well, I can always add another event to it. So let's go again, probability of a yellow, uh, rolling a two on a die. Now, 
let's get the chance of getting a white. All right, so let's do green. Underneath, I'm going to write my individual probabilities. I'm going to multiply them together and get my winnings. Chance of a yellow, one half. Chance of a two, one out of six. Chance of a green. Well, remember, I had three of these. I had three. I had one white, two green. So I have two greens out of a total of three. Now, the reason I chose green is watch what can happen. Before I even use my calculator, let's say I don't have my calculator, I could multiply diagonally and reduce. All I need is a numerator and a denominator. Oh, here's a 2. He can cross off. I'm left with the 1. Here's a 2. He can cross off. I'm left with the 1. Now, you can use your calculator. Type them in. You'll get the same response. Across the top, 1s. I get a 1 across the top. Across the bottom, 6 times 3 is 18. So did my chances get better or worse? Hopefully you notice they got worse. One out of every 12 should have won the two events. Three events, one out of 18. And my percent should drop from 8%. One divided by 18 is 5.5 repeating percent, so roughly 6%. Now what I could do is go through 18 times and see if truly one person wins. All right, it takes time to do that, so I'll skip that at this point. Just understand if I have compound probability, find the chance of one thing happening, find the chance of any other event happening, and know that I multiply them together. And that's how you find out what the chance of everything happening. Real quick is we're going to use a normal deck of cards. Um, as part of your assignment, so I just want to be clear so we all know what goes into a deck of cards. A standard deck of cards is 52 cards. I can split that in half. Gives me 26 red cards and 26 black. Okay. The red cards can be split from there. I have hearts, so I have 13 of those. And I have diamonds. I have 13 of those. The black cards can be split into spades, which look like upside down hearts, and clubs, which look like clovers. And I have, again, 13 and 13. So you have to understand each set of cards has 13. Now, in or each suit of cards. So I have four suits. In each suit, every single one of these has 13 cards, and they go in this order. Ace, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, from there it goes jack, queen, and king. And again, the ace could probably go at the front or the back, but I'm showing you this so when you go to do the assignment, you have an idea of how many of the cards are red, how many are black, how many are this suit, how many are that suit. And if we say how many jacks are in a deck, oh, you could say, well, there's a jack of clubs, there's a jack of spades, there's a jack of diamonds, and there is a jack of hearts. So that you could say, oh, there's four jacks in a deck of 52 cards.